This screencast is a end of module review for module four. It's based upon the practice set that I created for my classroom and it goes over the problems. There's also a homework that goes along with it. These problems all parallel the problems that you'll see on your actual end of module assessment. Uh, if you see this, I have a link to the uh, practice set and homework files so that you can try them out yourself. I recommend going over the practice set first, trying it yourself, and then going through this video to see what you did right and what you did wrong and prioritize what you study before taking this assessment. In the first set of problems it tells us to multiply or divide and draw a model to explain your thinking. I didn't do all the problems here that I have on my practice set but I did a representative uh, portion of it. This video is going to be long enough as it is. Let's start with the first one. We have one-fifth times one-third. Okay, that's a fraction times a fraction. I'm going to create a rectangular area model and I'm going to partition it into three equal parts using two vertical lines. I'll label that one-third, then I'll shade in my one-third. Now I'm going to represent the first factor. That's one-fifth, so I've got to uh, partition this into five equal parts. And then I'm going to bracket one of those five parts. and I have one-fifth. We'll double shade this one section, and we now have one-fifth times one-third. And if we look at that, there's 15 uh, partitions in all, and one of the 15 are double shaded. We get one-fifteenth. The next one is very similar to it. We have two-thirds of one-fourth. Now, two-thirds of one-fourth, that means we are multiplying. So again, we are going to create a rectangular model. I'll partition this into four equal parts. I'll bracket one-fourth, and we'll shade that in. Now we have two-thirds, so I'm going to bracket, uh, rather, uh, to partition this horizontally into three equal parts. I will bracket two-thirds and I'll double shade the two-thirds. So again, if we look at this, we have a total of one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four times three is twelve, so our denominator is twelve. And two out of the twelve are double shaded, and of course we can simplify that to one-sixth. Now let's use the algorithm. Two-thirds times one-fourth equals two times one over 3 times 4, and we can uh, find a common factor. That becomes a 1, this becomes a 2, and I end up with 1 6, just like the answer we had when we used the area model. Now we'll do some division, and the first one, I have a whole number, and I'm dividing it uh, by thirds. So let's now take this, and we're going to use more of a tape diagram model. We're going to bracket the whole, which is 5. Now we're going to represent 5 by partitioning this into 5 equal parts. Now each one of these parts needs to be cut into thirds. So I'm going to partition. Oh, that's uh, too many there. Let me erase that. And we'll partition that into thirds. And if I count how many thirds I have in here, I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And again, we can use the algorithm. I have 5 uh, divided by 1 third equals 5 times 3 equals 15. In the next one, we have a fraction divided by a whole number. And again, we'll, we'll make the representation. I'm going to take it, I'm going to bracket, and we make that a whole. I have one half, and I'm going to shade in one half. 
we're going to divide that into three equal parts. We want to divide the other part so that we know how many parts there are in all. So if I look at this, I have one half divided by three. I'll double shade one of these guys. And we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Out of the six, one is totally shaded. So from the area diagram, we could see that the answer is one sixth. Let's do the algorithm. I have one half divided by three. Well, that becomes one, two, three out of six. So, and that's equivalent three six divided by three. Well, that's easy enough because we know that 3 6 divided by 3 would be 1 6. So there's a quick review of uh, some of the modeling that we have to do. An awful lot to remember in this uh, uh, module and this end of module assessment. And here it just tells us to multiply or divide using any method. And simply enough, I have uh, simply multiplying a decimal times a whole number. And again, uh, we can do that. Well, I'm going to put my 21 up here my 1 and 3 tenths. And remember, what we do is we just multiply and don't deal with the decimal till the very end. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. We put our 0 in the 1's place, and we multiply, and we find the sum. Now, I have to look at the number of decimal places in my two factors. This one has 0, this one has 1. So I'm going to put in Imagine the decimals there. I'm going to move it one place over to there. So my answer is 27 and 3 tenths. The next one is uh, dividing. And we know that we see here we have a, uh, a decimal for our divisor. So we're going to deal with that by rewriting this as a fraction. So that equals 15 divided by four hundredths. Now, I want to get rid of that decimal in my uh, divisor. That's the bottom part here, or the last part. That's our divisor, and it's the same as our denominator. I'm going to have to move this two decimal places. And here, I'm going to move this two decimal places. And you'll notice that I have to put in a, place, a couple placeholders here. So what I did is I multiplied this, and, and feel free to do it this way, that's 15 times 100 over 4 hundredths times 100. And whether I do it by uh, using the arrows and moving the decimal place or by the multiplying it out, I end up with 1,500 divided by 4. We can simply now divide that out. And 4 goes into 15, 3 times, that becomes a 12. I subtract and I get a 3. 4 goes into 3, 7 times, we have a 28. And I subtract and get a 20. 4 goes into 20, 5 times, so my answer is 375. In the next problem, we have a mixture of... Um, decimals and fractions. Well, we have a couple of ways we could do that, right? I could I could simply turn both of these into fractions. So I'd have well, 13 and 2 tenths becomes 132 over 10, 132 tenths times 3 fourths. So we can now uh, find a common factor in here. This becomes a 1. And this becomes, well, 4 goes into 13 three times, and I get a 12, and I get a 33. So this becomes 33 times 3 over 10 equals 99 over 10 equals 9 and 9 tenths. We could also treat this as a decimal. Most of us know that 3 fourths is the same as 0 0.75, so we could do it out that way as well. little light on space here. Let's see if I can just move this a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's uh, treat this as a decimal. And we have 2, or 5 times 2 is 10. 
regroup that one. And 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. Regroup the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Put our 0 in. Multiply uh, 7 times 2 is 14. Regroup my 1. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. Regroup the 2. And 7 times 1 is 7. Plus 2 is 9. Okay, take the sum of our partial products. We get a 0. 6 plus 4 is 0. Regroup the 1. And 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. And 9 plus nothing is 9. Now we have to look at our decimal places and our factors. We have 1 here, 2 here for a total of 3. Move that decimal one, two, three places, and we end up with nine and nine tenths. For these problems, we simply have to convert words into expressions, uh, numerical expressions, and we'll take a look at this. I have one fourth of the sum of one half plus one, or and one fourth. So we're going to kind of put brackets around that. So we have to find the sum of one half and one fourth. When we see the word sum, we know we need to add. Now I could put the one fourth in the front, or I could do uh, I could find the sum first. We can do that because of the commutative property. Let's go on to the next one. And the next one is a little interesting because we have division here. 25 divided by, so we're going to have to start with that. That's going to be our whole. That Our whole is our dividend. That's the first part of our expression. We cannot change the order. So 25 divided by the difference between 3 fourths and 1 half. So I'll start with my 25 divided by the difference between 3 fourths and 1 half difference tells us to subtract. Uh, note that it doesn't tell us that we have to solve this problem. These are just two examples and you'll see some of these on your homework and on your test as well. So as a concession stand it runs for six hours. Five volunteers split the working at the stand equally. How long will each volunteer work? Record your answer in hours, hours and minutes, and finally we have to record it in minutes. Well let's start with the hours and we can convert it. So what do we have here? We have six hours. Six hours and we're splitting among five volunteers. So I have six divided by five. And that equals six fifths. And I could change that to an improper fraction or excuse me a mixed number. That would become one and one fifth. So I could say one and one fifth or I could say six-fifths of an hour. Either one is acceptable. One and one-fifth. So now I have my hours and minutes. Now I could, I know that I have one hour here. And then I also have one-fifth of an hour. And I want to change that to minutes. So I'm going to go one-fifth times one hour equals one-fifth well, one hour is equal to how many minutes? We should know that it's 60 by now. And now we have 1 times 60 is 60 divided by 5. And that becomes 60 divided by 5 is 12. So it would be 1 hour, 12 minutes. Now, I have a few ways I could do the next one. I could just convert my hour here. I know that 1 hour is 60 minutes. And I have 12 minutes. And that equals 72 minutes. I could also use the procedure. I could start with this, my 6 fifths. 6 fifths times 1 hour equals 6 fifths times 60 minutes equals 6 times 60 divided by 5. I can find my common factor. This becomes a 12. This becomes a 1, and I'll just bring that over here. 6 times 12 equals 72. 72 minutes once again.
Here we need to write a division expression that matches the situation for the next two problems. Draw a diagram for each problem and solve. Very similar to what you see on your actual test. All right, so we are going to now take a look at Bob and Roberta share six or eight meters of wire equally. How much uh, wire will they get? Well, that's that's very simple, right? We have eight divided by two equals four. How would we diagram that? We would take it, bracket the whole, the whole is eight. We have two equal parts. We can put a question mark there. The next one, a teacher cuts eight meters of wire and cuts it into half meter pieces. How many pieces will he get? Well, this is a very different problem. We now have eight divided by one half. So let's uh, create the diagram. I'm going to need a pretty good size diagram here because we have a hole of eight. We need to partition this into eight equal parts. Well, not really equal, cool, but we're close. And we're going to divide it into halves. And we see that that is equal to, if we count the parts, we actually have 16. But we also know that that is the same as 8 times 2 equals 16. Now on the test, they're going to ask you which one of these could be solved by 1 half times 8. Well, clearly, this one uh, cannot be over here because 1 half times 8 is the same as 8 divided by 2. So if we have 1 half times 8, I have 8 halves equals 4. So that's the same solution as we have here. But over here, we have a solution of 16. That's not the same. Multiplying by 1 half is not the same as dividing by 1 half. Okay, this one's really hard. It says write the largest value for each point marked on the number line above in terms of the largest possible whole number of gallons, quarts, and pints. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Each one of these units represents one whole gallon. We can see that a gallon is partitioned into eight equal parts. Well, what does that mean? Well, you should know by now that there's 16 cups in a gallon. Uh, this, these aren't cups. There's not 16. So what do we have? Well, two cups equals one pint. So each one of these lines right here represents a pint. Now when we get to two pints, we now have a quart. And if I get to this point here, I'm going to have to say that is one quart and one pint, I'd also say that's zero gallons. If I get to this point here, I now have one pint, two pints, so it'd be zero gallons, uh, two, excuse me, one quart, two quarts, it'd be zero gallons, two quarts, zero pints. Well, let's get started on this. It might be a little bit confusing, but I've already delineated where we are here. When we get to this point, we are at two quarts, because every two hops is a quart, so I have one, two quarts. I'm going to go one more hop. Those individual hops from one line to another means that we're going up a pint. So where am I? Look at A. I'm not up to one gallon, so I put zero gallons. I now have two quarts, and I go beyond that by one, and I have two quarts, one pint. Let's look at B. B, well, we're between 1 and 2, and that means we have 1 gallon. Now I'm going to go and go 1, 2 hops. That's 2 pints. 2 pints is equal to 1 quart. So I have 1 gallon, 1 quart, and 0 pints. Let's go to C. C, I'm between 2 and 3, so I'll put in 2 gallons. I'm going to go one hop beyond that. Now each hop, each one of these little hops equals what? One pint. So I don't have enough to make a quart. So two gallons, one quart would be here. I'm short of that. 
So I'm going to put 0 quarts, and I have 1 pint. Finally, D. Again, we're between 2 and 3, so I have 2 gallons. And let's see what we have here. Uh, I'm going to just start from that 2 again. So I have 1, 2 hops. That is uh, 1 quart. Every 2 hops is a quart. 1, 2, that's 2 quarts. 1, 2, that's 3 quarts. So I have 2 gallons, 3 quarts. And of course, I don't have any pints because I've traded all my pints for quarts. I hope that helps on my homework help. 5.com website. I uh, do have a quick little quiz that uh, reviews this further. There's also a few more videos on that site. It says Bob made 13 gallons of maple syrup. He splits it evenly into five containers. How much syrup is in each container? Well, I have a whole of 13. Make my tape diagram. I'm going to partition it into five equal parts. And I'm going to find out what that individual part is. And what do we do? Well, that's simply 13 divided by 5 equals the fraction 13 fifths. I could leave it at that. I also could change it into a mixed number, which would be, well, 5 goes into 13 twice. We have the remainder of 3, and there denominator is fifths. So I uses so each container has two thirds of a gallon of maple syrup. All right, let's continue. We're going to have to use the information from the previous problem to solve the next one. Now, I have the answer expressed two different ways. I have it expressed as in an improper fraction and a mixed number. I want to find two-thirds of that amount. It's easiest to start with my improper fraction. So I have 13 fifths. I want to find two-thirds of. That means we're going to multiply it by two-thirds. And 13 times 2 is 26. And three, 5 times 3 is 15. And I can now change that into a mixed number. One way to do that is uh, do some division. Goes in once. And I get 11. My remainder becomes my numerator. And my divisor is my denominator. So it would be 1 and 11 fifteenths gallons. Okay, I've got a couple more problems pertaining to Bob. Let's uh, finish this video up. Okay, we have Bob used one-fifth of a gallon of syrup to serve eight plates of pancakes. If each person used the same amount of syrup, how much syrup did each person use? Well, what's our hole? This is what our hole is. We need to split it into eight equal parts. I could draw a tape diagram. It's going to have to be a big one. And I'm going to partition this into five equal parts. And I'm going to shade one-fifth. It's going to be a little tight here. And now I've got to divide that into eight equal parts. We're going to shade one of those. So how many parts do we have in all? And we've got to uh, add these to the other one as well. One, Okay, if I counted all these, I have, I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to just point out that I have, in each of these, I have 8. I have 5 eighths, so that's 40. So out of 40, one of these is completely shaded. So through the diagram, I can determine that the answer is 1 40th. Well, let's do it this way. I have 1 fifth divided by 8. And if I look at that, my 1 fifth represented over here becomes 8 fortieths. 8 fortieths divided by 8 equals 1 fortieth. Okay, one more problem. Bob is using 4 gallons of syrup and pours it into jugs that are 
a quarter gallon each. How many does he feel, fill? Well, the hole this time is my four, my four gallons. And I'm going to pour into jugs one-fourth each. Well, let's first partition my tape diagram into four equal parts. And each one of these represents a gallon, each one of these partitions. And I'm going to now break it into fourths. So we're going to just divide these into four equal parts. So what do we have? If we look, we count them, we have four fours, and that's 16. Let's use the algorithm. Four divided by one-fourth equals four times four equals 16. Okay, there we go. A quick run through uh, many problems, very similar to that which you'll see on your actual assessment.